What's up gamers? Welcome to the video. My name is Koobs, and today I'll be going over the basics of invading in Elden Ring. And by basics, I do mean the very basics of the invasion mechanics and how to invade, meaning the items that you need to use in-game to invade other players. With that in mind, I'm going to make a couple of basic assumptions about you as the viewer, and those are that you have played Elden Ring and are familiar with the game to some extent, and that you are also vaguely familiar with the invasion mechanic, but that you aren't entirely sure how this mechanic works. So, welcome to Don't Be Afraid to Invade. So. While you're exploring the lands between, you might have come across a couple of these items that seem a little bit strange at first, um, namely being the Festering Bloody Finger. When you pick up this item, it's a little bit off-putting at first, but this is the very first introduction to the invasion mechanic that the game offers to you. Now you can find this item from several vendors in the starting areas, um, namely being um, the vendor that you can find in the Weeping Peninsula. And I'll go over a couple of these locations in just a moment. Um, as well as the vendor that you can find just outside of the Mistwood near Fort Height. Both of those vendors will sell you several of these festering bloody fingers for 1,000 runes. And you can use these as a one-time consumable item to invade the world of another player who's playing through the game. Now invasions are opened up to players who are playing through the game with a cooperative companion, meaning that they've opened themselves up to the multiplayer function by summoning in another player or by activating a specific item in the game known as the Taunter's Tongue, which allows them to receive or open their world up to invasions by other players. So in the background, I'm just showing some of these locations, like I mentioned, where you can collect these festering bloody fingers in the early game. And for a very new player, at first glance, it's going to seem like, why would somebody spend their 1,000 runes on this item? One of the downsides of the festering bloody fingers, actually, unless they have fixed it, to my knowledge, um, if you use a festering bloody finger to... Um, in, invade another player and something happens like there's a connection issue like a disconnect because of the, the network issue or if the host um, goes into the uh, the boss encounter or finishes the killing the boss in the open world let's say and you've just invaded you'll actually lose that festering bloody finger without really getting an invasion so that's one of the downsides there but thankfully, there are items in the game which allow us to invade without having to spend the consumable item. And we'll go over that in just a moment. Here, I'm showing where you can find the invasion items. You can go to the multiplayer um, section on your menu. And in this area here, you can see I've got the festering bloody finger or the bloody finger because mine has been um, upgraded. And we'll go over that, like I mentioned, very shortly. And you can use that item from the multiplayer uh, section of your um, options menu, but you can also go directly into the inventory and select it from there as well. When you go to use the item, it's going to give you two options. It'll give you the option to invade nearby, and it'll give you the option to, near, to invade near and far. When you invade nearby, it's going to limit the radius of your invasion range to the locale that you're in. So let's say, for example, you are in Stormvale Castle and you invade nearby. You're only gonna invade within Stormvale Castle. However, if you invade near and far, then you will invade not only in Stormvale Castle, but also in any other area of the map that you have unlocked yourself and where an invasion might be taking place in your level range with your within a range of your weapon upgrade level. So those are some things that you do want to keep in mind when it comes to invading is what level your character is, as well as what level your weapons are. So you might have noticed there that I was alternating between two different items. 
those being the bloody finger and the recusant finger. Both of these items allow you to invade on a permanent basis as either a phantom bloody finger or as a phantom recusant or recusant. Neither of these items are particularly difficult to acquire, but I do think they could be easily overlooked or bypassed on a first playthrough. So let's start by taking a look at the recusant finger. The recusant finger can be acquired by um, accepting an invitation to Volcano Manor. Now, the easiest and most direct way to acquire this invitation is through meeting an NPC known as Raya the Scout. In order to do so, we need to access Liernia of the Lakes, which we can do by um, either going through Stormvale Castle or going around Stormvale Castle and getting to the lakes that way. This is the location of where you will find Raya the Scout. You might have noticed on the map, I was kind of showing that there is a telescope marker on the map right there. And you can kind of naturally follow the road and it'll take you more or less to her location. Off to the side here is a site of Grace. There's also a little spot here where our friend Patches might have moved to once we have um, gained access to this area. From there, you can take a look at, um, from, from the top of that lookout, you can see a building off into the distance. That is the Boil Prawn Shack. That is where we are going to um, receive Raya's locket and return it to her. You're going to need 1,000 runes in order to purchase the locket from Blackguard Boggart at the Boil Prawn Shack. Once you've purchased the locket from him, you can just simply return to Raya and she'll give you an invitation to Volcano Manor. Now, the next thing that you have to do is access the Altus Plateau, which you can do by taking the Dectus Lift. You can find two halves of the Dectus Medallion at Fort Height, which is in the Mistwood of Limgrave, and in Fort Faroth, which can be found in Kaled. You can take this lift, and at the top of the lift, Raya will be waiting for you. But before you engage with Raya, I would recommend you head off to the side here because you can find a site of grace. So rest at the site of grace first, or at the very least, you know, um, light the site of grace and then go talk to Raya. And once you have spoken to Raya, she will offer to take you to Volcano Manor. You can then accept and she will then transport you to Volcano Manor where you can speak with the head of Volcano Manor. Now that you have an invitation, you will gain access to the room where the recusants hang out, and you can find your recusant finger there on the table along with your orders for your first um, hunt or invasion, if you will. Rather straightforward acquiring the recusant figure. You don't have to do any fighting, and you can just kind of <laughs> navigate the map. It's time to take a look at the bloody finger and um, how we can acquire this item. A little bit different because we don't actually have to progress as far um, through the lands between, although we do have to defeat at least one shard bearer in order to acquire the bloody finger. So once we've defeated a shard bearer, we will be granted audience with the two fingers. After we have interacted with the Two Fingers, we can then visit Vare at Rose Church, which is located in Liernia of the Lakes. And he will give us five bloody fingers, and he will tell us to use them and um, see how it feels, more or less. Now, if you haven't already previously um, used these phantom bloody fingers, this is a wonderful introduction to the invasion mechanics simply by playing the game and interacting with the game in the way that it's showing you you can interact with it by having gone back to the first step you would have been led to the rose church when you get to the rose church you are then given this item and the game is saying hey you probably at this point have enough experience with the game that maybe invasions are a good thing to in introduce to you now and so it does so, and I really appreciate that um, from a, a gameplay mechanic standpoint. Regardless, after you have done 
your invasions. You only need to do three, but he will give you five of the festering bloody fingers. After you've done three invasions, you can speak to Vary again, and he will give you the Lord of Blood's favor. He will tell you to soak this in the blood of a maiden. And there are two locations where we can find these maidens. The first being we can go through the four belfries. The four belfries is basically a top of a hilltop. There are there's basically going to be a, a chest and you can open up the chest and it's going to give you a keystone and that keystone is going to access a teleporter and it's going to take you to the chapel of anticipation where we started our journey from there you can defeat the boss that i had on screen at the very beginning when i was showing the, the phantom bloody finger here and then you can um, soak the lord of blood's favor in the maiden's blood that's there you could also go through the Church of Inhibition, I believe it's called. And that's um, here where we're dueling with the Festering Finger Vike. And this could be a difficult fight for you, but you only need to interact with, um, with the Maiden there. So if you can kind of navigate around him, then you could also do this without having to, to fight anybody, which is also kind of nice. Um, and then when you return to Vare, he will then give you the bloody finger. So now we know how we can get our bloody fingers. We know how to use them. When we are actually in an invasion itself, there are two quick things I wanted to point out. The first one is going to be our compass at the very top. We can see this little golden circle. That is the direction of our target. As we get closer to our target, known as the host, it will disappear when we are within a certain distance. But until then, it can be used to help us navigate to the host. The other item is going to be our phantom recusant finger or phantom bloody finger, which we can use three times in an invasion to teleport to a different location on the map and possibly gain the advantage in that way. So these have been the basics of invading in Elden Ring. I'm going to go take these guys on. I really appreciate you so much for being here. Hopefully you learned something. If you did, really appreciate it if you could leave a thumbs up so that more people could see this video and start invading in Elden Ring. And I wish you the best of luck on your invasion journey. I have been and always will be Koobs. Peace and love gamers.